This man's name is Salvador Alvarenga, a Mexican fisherman. He's about to go to sea and catch a lot of fish, and although it's evident that a storm's coming, Salvador is sure he'll get back before it starts raging. He's never been so wrong. And this is Poon Lim. He's signed on as a second steward on Ben Lamond, a British merchant ship. He can't speak English, and to tell the truth, he wanted to quit his job as a sailor, but then he was persuaded to join the crew. Lim doesn't know it yet, but the ship will be torpedoed shortly after leaving port. For different reasons, both of these men ended up in the Pacific Ocean with no possibility to get back to dry land or call for help. And it remained so for months. In this video, I'll tell you what you should drink instead of water, how one nail can defeat a shark, and most importantly, how long you can survive in the open ocean. What mistakes should be avoided from the very start? Don't be so arrogant as to ignore a storm, even if you're a skilled fisherman like Salvador Alvarenga. Letting a rookie tag along isn't a good idea either, especially if the first mistake has already been made. When the water started flooding the small motorboat, the captain ordered a young fisherman named Ezekiel Cordoba to bail it out. Cordoba felt terribly scared and seasick. He begged Alvarenga to go back to the shore, but the cap didn't listen. The sea was full of fish to catch, and Alvarenga needed them despite the storm. Unlike him, Poon Lim didn't know the risks. Even though he was a sailor, he had very poor swimming skills. The ship was destroyed, and the entire crew was dead. So Lim himself barely managed to grab a wooden raft that he spotted among the wreckage and burning fuel. When he came to his senses, he saw a small supply of food and water, three distress flares, and a flashlight. However, he couldn't read the instructions for the flares because they were written in English, and he launched them right into the ocean. Nearly all the fishing equipment that belonged to Alvarenga and Cordoba ended up in exactly the same place in the ocean. When the storm became less intense, the fishermen managed to come close to land, and they were just 20 miles away from it. They radioed their colleagues who stayed ashore, but they couldn't drop anchor, determine their coordinates, or come any closer because the waves were still pretty violent. The only things the fishermen could do were to wait and keep their faith. Why shouldn't you lose hope and self-belief in a situation like this? Alvarenga and Cordoba were located around 280 miles off the coast when they discovered food aboard. One onion. And although they were dying of thirst, Alvarenga knew that drinking seawater would be a fatal mistake under any circumstances. The fishermen started licking off the condensation that appeared on the boat surface. Cordoba was losing faith, but the cap assured him that they just needed three things to survive, and these are shade, water, and food. Alvarenga could have found a great partner in Lem, as the sailor also understood the necessity of these basics. Lim set up a tent and used it to collect rainwater and to hide under just like a shelter. But the weather stayed dry for several weeks. All three men had to drink their own urine, and all three of them were gradually losing their minds. Cordoba gave up, and one day Alvarenga realized that his companion was dead. The guy had committed suicide. Alvarenga and Lim were both left one-on-one -on -one with the ocean from that moment on. They could only hope that some passing ship or plane would rescue them at that point, and their prayers were answered. Three fishermen on a large merchant ship spotted Alvarenga and started waving at him. However, they didn't call for help or raise the alarm. Perhaps they just didn't understand that Alvarenga was in trouble. As for Lim, an American plane noticed him and threw a lifebuoy to him, intending to come back and save the man. But the storm carried Lim's raft away from that place. Sometime later, he was found by a ship, but the crew deliberately ignored the survivor, thinking that he was a Japanese soldier and potentially dangerous. That's because Lim got lost in the ocean during the Second World War in 1942, 70 years before Alvarenga. How to save yourself if you have nothing? 
lack of resources prompts a human brain to generate unexpected solutions. Alvarenga, for instance, ate jellyfish until he learned to hunt for food with his fingernails. He'd put his hands into the water, elbow deep, while pressing himself to the board. Then in one swift move, he brought them together and grabbed fish by digging his nails deep into their flesh. As time went by, Alvarenga started eating his nails as well, chewing them properly. Lim came up with another solution. He built a fish hook out of a wire and a flashlight. A bigger hook made of a nail helped him catch a meter-long shark. He drank its blood straight from its liver. Alvarenga also found shark liver helpful and used it as a laxative. And it saved him since his stomach was stuffed with scales and small fish bones. This man had tried to bring all the items he had into play. The fisherman picked up all the garbage he came across, rags, bottles, insoles, all of that he collected for his first aid kit. However, foolish ideas crossed his mind too. He chewed the wood paneling of the boat. He tried to feed on his beard. He made balls of his hair and swallowed them with some water. One day, he almost decided to cut his little finger off and eat it. But there's an important thing that Alvarenga forgot about that Lim didn't. Physical exercise. Various studies have proven that even well-trained athletes can barely get out of bed after one month of unplanned inactivity. Their muscles become atrophied. To keep fit, Lim practiced swimming. Not too much, but regularly. And one fine day, it saved his life. Why sighting land doesn't guarantee a happy ending. 133 days after the shipwreck, Lim saw land on the horizon. He still had the energy to row towards it, reach the coast, and go find civilization. As for Alvarenga, he stayed in the ocean much longer, 438 days. And unlike Lim, he didn't exercise. When he started approaching a small island, Eben Atoll, he waited for half a day until his boat ran ashore on its own. He felt so weak that he didn't risk jumping in the water and swimming. He dared to leave the boat only when there were some 10 meters between him and the sand. His legs touched the seafloor, but he could hardly walk. When there was no more water to support his weight, he collapsed to the ground and fell asleep. Then he was found by locals, and although the survivor couldn't speak their language, they understood what had happened to him. As for Lim, he was found by Brazilian fishermen. They took him to the hospital, where the seaman stayed for almost a month. He'd lost just around 10 kilograms over those four months he'd spent in the ocean. Although Lim was dehydrated and exhausted, his condition was stable. Alvarenga was diagnosed with anemia, a decreased number of blood cells. He returned to Mexico to his family. The man ended up hating the ocean with all of his heart. He quit fishing and couldn't sleep alone for a long time. What's more, the mother of his mate who'd committed suicide sued Alvarenga because she thought that he'd eaten her son. In contrast to that, Lim was welcomed back as a hero. He became a citizen of the United States and was awarded a British Empire Medal by King George VI. Moreover, the Royal Navy implemented some of his techniques into training manuals for their sailors. Salvador Alvarenga knew nothing at all about those manuals. He figured out almost everything written there for himself. That's because, unlike dry land, the ocean hadn't really changed in 70 years. And if someday, for whatever reason, you find yourself in a situation like this, remember that these things Shade, water, food, physical activity, faith in your abilities, and a subscription to the channel are the primary keys to your survival.